Hello, today we're talking about exponential functions. So the thing that distinguishes an exponential function is that the input, or the x, is actually an exponent. So your variable is the exponent. That makes a really big difference. It might not seem so at first. Let's just compare some numbers Let's compare a linear and an exponential function. So these two tables, so the question says, does each table represent a linear and exponential function? Let's just kind of identify how to tell the difference between those. So first of all, notice that your inputs are going up by one each time. That makes it kind of simple to compare. And I think it's the same way on this one. So we're just going up by one each time. And now let's look at the outputs though. So your first output is 2, and then it goes to 4, which is an increase of 2, right? So we've got plus 2, and then from 4 to 6, we add 2 again. From 6 to 8, we add 2. So this one's linear, and that's because the amount that's changing is the same every time. Now the difference with an exponential is that, so this time, we're actually, so you might think, oh, we're adding 4, Oh, but now we're adding 8, and now we're adding 16. And what we're actually doing is we're multiplying by 2 every time in this case. So 4 times 2 equals 8, then 8 times 2 equals 16, 16 times 2 equals 32. And you can see that that's going to get large really fast. So this one's only at 8 after an input of 3. This one's already at 32, and every time it's going to double. So next. It will go to 64, and then 128, and then 256. You can see that starts getting really large. So linear functions have a constant rate of change. And then exponential functions change by equal factors over equal intervals. Or basically, they're, they change by being multiplied by something. And so let's say that you had y equals 3x. That's a linear function, and let's just, I'm just going to put the outputs really quick. So instead of doing a whole table, so if x were 1, then you would get 3 times 1 is 3. If x were 2, then you'd get 3 times 2 is 6. And basically every time it's going to increase by 3. Because if you had 3, 3 times 3 is 9, and it keeps going, right? And an exponential function, that would be something like y equals 3 to the x, like that. And so you can see that the first one, if x was 1, you just have 3 to the 1, which is 3. So it starts out the same. But then 3 squared would be 9 already. And then 3 to the 3rd would be 27. And then 3 to the 4th would be 81. You can see that that's going to get large a lot faster. And each time, you're multiplying by 3. And that's because that's our base right there. And this one, we're also multiplying by 3, but we're only multiplying by the number, by the x. And this one, we're actually raising to the power of x. So that makes a big difference. OK, let's look at a few examples of substituting this in. So you have to be really careful about your order of operations on this. But once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. So evaluate each function for the given value of x. So if x equals 3, and you see where the x is, you're going to basically plug it right in. So you're going to recopy it, and instead of an x, you're going to write a 3. Order of operations say to evaluate the power before you multiply. So 5 to the third would be 125. That's a good one to punch into your calculator if you don't know that already. And the button on the calculator Remember what it looks like really quick. I believe it looks like x to the y is usually how it looks. That would be the button on the calculator. And you usually hit the base first. So if you're evaluating 5 to the third, you'd hit 5, and then you'd hit this button, then you'd hit 3 equals, and you should get 125. So check that you get that on your calculator. And next we're going to multiply negative 2 times 125 to get negative 250. And that will be your final answer. Okay, so on this one, 
y is negative 2, and once again, just plug it straight in. So we're going to get y equals 3 times 0 0.5 to the negative 2. And keep in mind, remember when any, anything is a negative exponent, this will end up being the same as 3. Well, I don't want to do too many steps in my head. So 3 times 1 over 0 0.5 squared, like that. Which is really the same as 3 over the 0.5 squared is going to be 0 0.25. So you can evaluate that. And when you divide, you get 12. And you could also enter it into your calculator at this stage with a negative exponent, if you prefer. Just make sure that you get this answer. Kind of double check right now with your calculator that you got the same thing. You can pause the video for a second if you need to. Okay, and then next we've got x equals 3. We're going to plug it straight in for that x. So you get y equals 2 times 9 to the third. So that 3 only applies to the 9. So punch in 9 to the 3rd on your calculator. And you should get 729. And now we multiply by the 2. And you get 1,458. Alright, that's it for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.